Hi, it's Johnny here again from Flexible Digital Urban Modeling, a class with Dr. Marcus White from the University of Melbourne. Um, today I'm going to show you um, how to set up basic particle flow um, so that we can uh, roll some balls down a slope. I thought this could be useful potentially for uh, fields like landscape architecture if you need to test your terrain um, with, without actually trying to simulate water. Um, balls, I guess, can indicate how um, water may interact with the surface. All right, to begin, begin with, uh, we'll just create a plane. Make this about 300 by 400. We'll just ignore that it's meters. Um, we'll, you know, potentially it could be any size, I guess. Um, Okay, and I'm, I'm just setting up a, a basic undulating terrain, um, but you know, you could, I guess you could test anything really. Uh, terrain. Now let's bring up um, particle flow by pressing number six. And now we want to use uh, M particles flow. And I think this is only available in uh, 3D Studio Max 2014. But I'm sure you can achieve the same thing in other in 2013 just using other um, systems. But I think this one makes it a little bit easier. So drag that into the into the view. So it's a bit small. There we go. Now we have you see this sort of grid of boxes that have have um, automatically been set up on our screen. So if we hit play, it just starts falling. <coughs> we increase the our frames to say 400. You can see again. So this is actually hitting, not actually hitting the surface. <coughs> it's hitting the um, the plane. Um, so what we need to do is select everything and let's just move it up. So then if I press play. Sorry, I'm going to move this guy, the MP world, down below our surface. I want to move this. And now we want to make it so that our, our cubes hit the surface and interact with this um, surface. So to select the, um, the terrain and in modify, go to uh, P flow collision shape. And we'll just leave all the settings as they are. We can tweak these later. Um, and then click activate. So this still won't work until we um, we add it. We add the collision to our particle view. So what we want to do is scroll across and find MP collision. We'll just drag that into our event, select it, and then we want to add. So our train is now added. So this should work. And what we can do now is we can we can change this to be some spheres. We'll stick to this more simple form um, just because 
it's going to be less intensive on the computer and less likely to stall. So what I want to do now is, um, you can see we have the, the birth grid and that's uh, this grid of spheres here. I want to change this to uh, a stream. So I can just simply drag this and it automatically selects this to repl be replaced. Yeah, it's all pretty crazy. So we can pull that birth stream up and position it where we want it. And if you play it's still pretty wild. So what we want to do is just change a few of the settings. So let's make this stop at flame frame 100 just for now. And then Let's give it a rate of, I'll leave it at 60 for now, and separation at 5 to give it a bit more space, because at the moment they seem to be colliding with each other before they get anywhere. Let's give it a speed, just, let's give it a slow speed, say 5. Make it a width of 5, and a length of 40. You can change all these yourself too suit the situation. Um, and then clicking on shape zero zero, let's make this a bit smaller, let's make it four. I found that it's good to have uh, have your your separation a little bit bigger than the actual shape, otherwise they tend to collide. Um, I also turn off delay birth if overlap. So this means it just forces the the particles out rather than stopping them if they're banging into each other. So you can see now that's probably a, a you know a decent speed to be able to look at the slope and see how how the balls or the spheres the particles um, interact with it and how they move. We can also um, increase make this go until 400, perhaps increase our timeline to 800. Just be aware that the more the more you put, the the slower your computer will become. Um, so it's better to keep it relatively simple. And then another thing that we can do is we can change the friction of our collision object, which is the plane here. Um, so I've just been playing with this, and if you set it to zero, the dynamic um, friction, the, the balls gain a lot more speed. We can also change it over um, yeah, here under M MP shape. Let's put this on zero as well. And you can see that this, um, the, the balls begin to accelerate much quicker. Which is potentially less realistic because I guess we want the balls to be moving. To, to, be, to analyze the terrain, we want the balls to be moving quite slowly. Um, but I guess it's just a bit more exciting this way. Yeah, let's put it back to 0.5. And change the color of the ball here to maybe something that stands out, so bright red.
So this almost um, looks like it's it could you know it could be simulating water. So back there, I just changed the collider's box to collider's sphere. Um, if we see what the difference is. The book, they, they definitely seem to lag a lot more on the surface. We change it to sphere. And there we have it. How to test the terrain with um, using particle flow. Another thing that we could try, and I'm not sure if this will work. Um, but firstly, let's, um, let's, let's change the color to something maybe perhaps more water-like. Let's just test this out again. One thing I did was change um, the separation to be a little bit closer, 4.3 rather than 5. And now I want to go to create a uh, compound object, blob mesh. Let's just click it here. Um, now we want to go to modify, add. Add the PF source. Hmm. Let's change the color of the bottom mesh to be that. Um, and tension, I think the tension's a bit high, let's put it down to the minimum amount. And you can see it's not perfect. I think there's plugins that will do this better, probably. But um, I don't know. Maybe it could resemble sort of water somehow. Um, and we could also, on top of this, add a turbo smooth. And see how that plays out. I guess if we used um, much smaller particles, it would work a lot better, but it would probably also um, crash my computer. And this is playing at a you know, very, very small, slow speed. So if we were to render this, um, the water would be moving a lot quicker. It's just that it's the blob mesh is having to regenerate every frame. So it's quite intensive. As you can probably tell, since my version of Beauty Studio Max crashed again, uh, this is quite intensive. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool, and I think it has a lot of possibilities for testing uh, landform. I think when you render it, the quality becomes a little bit better. It's still much more like water droplets running on the surface than um, actual water, but there we have it. That's uh, part using particle flow to test the movement of the slopes of an undulating terrain. Yeah, thanks for watching.